Hey everybody, Tim here with today's episode of Picard, Season 1, Episode 2, Maps and Legends. I can't believe it's already been a week since the last episode. I think I watched that pilot episode like three, maybe four times. Because I just, I kept watching it with, I've watched it with other people and just looking for little things that I might have missed. And I've seen other people comment on like, oh, did you notice this or did you notice that? The one thing that I missed <clears throat> that I'd wish I'd brought up in the last video, but I'll bring it up this time. Any Star Trek show you watch after the initial, the original series, it always says like based off of Star Trek created by Gene Roddenberry. I didn't notice it the f as when I made my first video, I didn't notice it, but I noticed it for this time that this Picard series actually says based off of Star Trek, the next generation created by Gene Roddenberry, which I think is great because it's giving credit to the next generation rather than the original series, which I don't know, it's, it's small potatoes, but but I really think that was interesting. <coughs> so overall, I, I am enjoying the series. I think a lot of people are watching it like, purely for nostalgia and a lot of people are absolutely loving it just for that reason alone and I'm not gonna lie like I'm not really digging that part of the show like I'm really I do like it I think it's a good show but it's it's so different than what I had imagined like I had imagined like just a brand new Star Trek show like just like the original series just like the next generation Deep Space Nine Voyager even to an extent Enterprise like that's exactly what I kind of had imagined this show was going to be like and it's not it's nothing like that so the thing is in the last 20 years even less than that, realistically, it's like the last 10 years. Like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, all of these, HBO, all of these shows have changed the way that we watch TV. It's no longer episodic. It's very like story arc, it's very story driven. Whether you're watching a show like Netflix where, boom, you get every single episode all on one day, or something like this where it's spread out over the course of like 12 weeks it doesn't really matter it's one long story plot <clears throat> and it's it's unusual to watch star trek in that sort of a way now even for discovery like i've if you guys have seen my reviews for discovery i have a very very difficult time watching discovery and staying in tune with it and I even like even I will have made mistakes where I'm like, this is just pointless. Why are they doing this? Like they're introducing this character. Oh, five episodes later, it's important because it's that long story arc. And on the flip side, I have made the opposite complaints about things like The Next Generation and Voyager and Deep Space Nine and stuff where you'll have an episode and they'll just get the shit blown out of them, holes everywhere. The very next episode, boom, pristine condition, right off the assembly looks great because they don't have that long continuity where it's like oh now we have to make repairs deep space nine was ahead of its time where it was trying to do that did it succeed yes and no <clears throat> but it at least took those steps to try to do that and so like when I watch Discovery, like that's how I expect Discovery to be, is to kind of have these story arc plot lines. Whereas for whatever reason, it's my own fault. With Picard, I was kind of expecting Picard to be, I was expecting a story line like connecting the entire season, but I wasn't expecting it to be like this, where every single episode goes into the next, into the next, and it's just this long story arc. And it's actually kind of difficult to watch Picard in that type of a fashion, just because it's something we've never seen before. Like we've always seen Picard in those episodic storylines. And now here we have this, like it's 10 episodes, I think this season, and it's going to be just one big chunk of a story. I'm sure there'll be a filler or two here and there, but like this whole episode, to be honest with you, to be realistic, like spoilers for the rest of this video, like not a lot happens. Like all it is, is just like kind of setting up this plot. And we pretty much already know the plot. Like, okay, Data was basically kind of like cloned a little bit and he has like twin daughters. One of them got destroyed and one of them's off working with the Romulans. That's it. And that's, we, we don't really learn anything else. <clears throat> 
Now the whole opening scene of like happy first contact day 14 years ago, seeing the synthetics and like bringing the shields down, which is again a great tie in to the, the short treks where we again saw it from those little girls perspectives. Stuff like that's great and it's really kind of an interesting tie. Seeing the two housekeepers, great shout out to the Tal Shiar, great shout out to Riker and Jordy and Worf. Hopefully we'll, we, I mean, we obviously know we'll see Riker. I would love to see Captain LaForge because we saw him in the future in Voyager, so we know he's a captain. And it'd be great to see Worf again as well. Um, and them talking about the, the Jacques Vache, and which is an even more secret police of the Romulans, which realistically to me, as soon as they were like, oh, the Tal Shiar is a secret police and the Jacques Vache is an even more secret police. I was like, seriously, like, why, do, why is that a thing? Why does that need to be a thing? Like we, and even like the, the Romulans, like, like, why do we even put the word secret in front of anything Romulan? Like just assume it's a secret. That's kind of how I felt. I was like, we don't need another secret branch of the secret police. So that's already going way too deep. Um, Dr. Asher and uh, Narek, I think was his name, uh, the Romulans sleeping together. Like, damn, that was fast from the last episode to this one. But, I mean, it kind of made sense. You could kind of see it coming. And then, of course, him being all secretive, watching them take apart the Borg was kind of, like, intense. Like, we saw them working in the Borg cube, but, like the ties to Voyager, like, oh, the Borg are no longer, like, out and about. They've basically kind of all shut down. 5,843 days, which is basically 16 years since the last, like, um, Borg takeover. I was like, okay, so resistance is no longer futile. We get it. <clears throat> so, I don't know. That, the, the Borg part of the story is kind of what's throwing me off. At first, I thought this whole series was just going to be about the Borg. And now that we know it's more about Data and his daughter, now I'm curious to see where the Borg part of this is going to come into play. Where does Hugh and Seven come in with the Romulan side? Which we know, like, in the fan fiction realm, like, William Shatner's written a books about, like, the Romulans and the Borg working together. So it's not that far off that the Romulans are trying to steal the Borg technology. But still, like, how far are they really going with that? Picard visiting Starfleet was a great scene. I grew up in San Francisco. I haven't been there in 20 years, so I would love to return at some point. But still, like, as soon as he, like, walks through the gate and, like, you can hear the, the classic music in the background and see the Golden Gate Bridge and stuff. And I love the, the ship in the top where it transforms from the Enterprise and then we saw the Enterprise D. The only thing I wish it would have, like, kept changing, like, I would love to have seen the, the, the E and the B and the C and just keep going through multiples. But we only saw the two, so whatever. <clears throat> Um, big shout out to, to the Admiral where she's like the sheer fucking hubris of Picard's like request. I mean, once again, this is not your dad's Star Trek or for most people watching this, this is not your Star Trek. Like this is a brand new generation and it is the second F-bomb in Star Trek. And the thing they did that I'm okay with, like as soon as she said sheer fucking hubris, like I kind of jumped back and I was like, oh, like this is not a happy conversation. In Discovery, I, if you watch that review that I did, <clears throat> I absolutely hated it. Like the editing for that episode and everything was like they were talking and I felt like the director was like, oh, let's quick, let's film this and put it in right now to have Tilly be like, this is so fucking cool. And it just like the pacing and everything fell off in that episode. Whereas for this, when the Admiral just lost her shit and she's like the sheer fucking hubris of you coming into my office and asking this, like, it actually flowed pretty well. Like, it took me back because, I mean, it's not every day. Like, in all of Star Trek, this is the second time they've said the word fuck. Like, it kind of, like, shook me, like, when your mom freaks out. And you're like, oh, what did I do? Like, she said, like, my full name type thing. And it, it worked for this scene. Like, it worked better for this scene than it did for when Tilly said it. But still, it didn't seem necessary. Like, if you took it out and she just was like... The sheer hubris of you in my office, like, it wouldn't have missed a beat. Like, it still would have played 
perfect. And like them like yelling at each other, it would have worked. So I still, I feel like they're trying to punch it up just to be edgy and like for the future generation. And they're like, oh, let's throw in swear words. The kids these days, they love the swear words. Let's put it in there. It's just not working for me. Um, and then the big twist at the end where the Romulans are now part of Starfleet. Okay, like, I don't know. Like, part of that, like, just didn't do it for me. It's nothing new. We've seen it before. Like, most of Deep Space Nine was all about the Cardassians and their undercover agents and, like, cosmetic changes, physical and... Okay, we've seen it before. We've seen Romulans going undercover as Vulcans in Star Trek before. Nothing new. So the whole thing where it's like, oh... The Romulan, like, homeworld is gone. They're an endangered species. So they're going to infiltrate Starfleet any way they can. Whether they're pretending to be Vulcans, whether they're pretending to be humans, doing whatever they can to, like, survive. It makes sense. It's nothing new. So, like, the big twist at the end. What a twist. I was like, all right, who didn't see that coming? So, I don't know. I am enjoying the series. I know I'm complaining a lot, so it might not seem like I'm enjoying it, but I really am super excited to have Picard back, and I'm super excited to kind of see where the series goes. But overall, like, we're not really seeing anything new or exciting yet. And because it's 10 episodes of plotline, we're two episodes in, so they're still kind of talking about what's going to happen. We haven't gotten to that big twist. And then the, the next time on Picard, it looks like it's just him putting together the crew. So we're still not going to get any, like, big action sequences. So... I'm really kind of curious, like, like I said, I, I am enjoying it, I promise, I swear. I just, I have to be analytical because if I just sit back and I'm just like, it's Picard, it's been 20 years, this is great. I'm not going to be doing anybody any favors. So if it seems like I'm coming down harsh on it, it's because I want it to be the best. And I really am liking it. So for those who have seen it, what did you guys think? I'm really excited to kind of hear what you guys are liking, what you're disliking, what you're hoping to see. Go ahead, let me know. Thank you guys for subscribing. That means a lot to me, and I'll see you guys next week for The End is the Beginning.